Gertrude Stein has a big butt slide over Gertrude. Welcome to the 3% Podcast. This is Chad Post from Open Letter. I'm here with Tamara Bears from Albertine Books. And we are going to talk about the Best Translated Book Award long list that was announced today. Um, the two of them were, the fiction and the poetry. Um, I know we'll start with poetry, but do you have anything, since you did um, the work down the, the fiction one, do you want to talk for a minute, Tom, about what you did to help organize this and any just general thoughts or concepts that you have? Um. I, in, in case anyone didn't know, because I mean, it's not like we made it public or anything, but um, just as a sort of, um, I don't know what the right word is, logistical sort of thing this year, you had asked me to just help partly because it was taking up a lot of your time um, and partly to like create a little bit of distance between you and the actual process, which is always a good thing. Um, so I was just sort of moderating and facilitating the judging process, which means I don't vote. I don't chime in on the process in any way, shape, or form. I'm just there to help the jury members um, with the process of voting, um, keep arguments to a minimum, keep the conversation going, get votes in on time, uh, solicit, the, solicit these why this book should win posts, and uh, you know, just basically make the process go as quickly as possible and as easily as possible. Um, because we have nine brand new judges this year, and it was you yeah. know, no one no one would have been the right person to uh, sort of spearhead this whole thing. But yeah. I do not, as much as I often wanted to interject my own opinions into the discussions that were had about books, I bit my tongue and... Uh, <laughs> and said nothing. And said nothing. And left it at that, which is very hard. Are you, are you pretty satisfied with how this turned out? Yes, um, I'm quite satisfied. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice list, I think. It's, it's, it's got a good mix of everything, I think. No? Yeah, I, I think so too. The one thing that um, I'm going to keep throwing shade at the uh, Ben Booker Award because I, because I can for once, um, but they with the diversity part of this is pretty crazy. So there's, uh, God, I just closed it again, but I have it out here somewhere. But there's like 23 different countries represented, 19 different languages, 26 different publishers, and of the 35 books on the two long lists, 15 are by women, but two of those have multiple women in each book. Wild Words has four female poets, and one load poems like Guns has um, is all women's poetry from Afghanistan. So we technically, I think there's nine people in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight women authors in there. So we end up with more females on the list than males, which I know is a big deal when the man Booker came out where they're like, it's 29% female or something in 22 or whatever the percentage was, but it's low and people complained about it. So now I feel like, well, and you guys didn't plan this because the, the, you guys didn't know what the poetry one was and the poetry people didn't know it was on fiction. It just so ended up that we ended up with a decent mix of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a little bit of discussion about, you know, that sort of thing among the jury, but uh, I feel like they all trusted each other to make the list. They all trusted that they wanted that to be a, something to consider, but didn't over burden themselves with that thinking. Right. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's like one of these things. It's like, if you just have it in the back of your mind, you're inclined to make better decisions, right? And it just, it worked out. It really yeah. did. Without it being um, a contentious issue of any kind. So. It, proves, it proves that it is possible. It is possible, yes. And therefore, yeah, that. Um, so you want to start with the poetry one? Do you want me to just read these and make comments? Or do you, do you want to take turns going back and forth? Um, you can read them. I'm really not going to know. Oh, look, Frederick Forte. Uh, go on. There go we ahead. go. So we'll, we'll wait. Well, why don't we read them one by one? If you have any comments, then, then throw them in there. Um, okay. uh, to preface this, uh, the judges for this were Jared Annis from Greenlight Bookstore, Katrine Ogard Jensen from Words Without Borders, um, who's also a translator from Danish, Tess Lewis, who's a writer and translator, Becca McKay, who's a writer and translator, and Deborah Smith, who's a translator, writer, and the founder of Tilted Access Press, which doesn't have any books out, so it's not, not a conflict of interest, and she's UK-based. Um, they picked 10 titles for their long list. Um, the first one, and what's funny, I mentioned this elsewhere, but... 
Um, I wrote one post, exactly one post last year on poetry, and it was like that one of them when I was making fun of all those year-end roundup lists and um, said that here were like, if I read poetry, here are the poetry books that I would have read. And I listed about like, I think eight or nine things. Six of those are on this long list. <laughs> so I feel like, I feel like without having read, I had a pretty good, pretty good read on this. Like I would, I would have led, I wouldn't have led myself astray and I followed my own, my own inclinations, but, um, or, the- or the judges are really lazy and they just took your advice. Oh, that's true. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that's also possible. I'm kidding judges, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure they know. Well, I think that they're they're just going to choose randomly who wins anyway. So, um, no, this is a pretty good list, though. So the first book is a Science Not for the Earth, Selected Poems and Letters by Yevgeny Baratinsky, translated from the Russian by Rowley Grau and published by Ugly Duckling Press. Um, that was one of the books I had on there. Wait, wait, wait. Can we back up a second here? Yeah. So you went through this thing about a Deborah Smith works for Tilted Axis and it's not a conflict of interest. Interest. Doesn't Jared work for Ugly Duckling? No, he quit. Oh, he, he did. Does, yeah, he doesn't work for them. It, uh, he he left there before becoming a judge. All right. Because that's when when we're when we're selecting the judges. Someone mentioned he used to work there and that he now works at Greenlight exclusively. So so there isn't a, there isn't yeah. Um, this book looks cool. <laughs> that's all I've got. Um, uh, Ugly Duckling is one of the few presses where like I know I guess I know the editors so well. Yeah. And have known some of the people who've translated for them and known some of the poets themselves that I really, really, really just trust their taste. So I agree. I'm really fine to like this. Me too. And I, I, yeah, and I like anything called The Science Not for the Earth. I like that title. Yeah. And they do really good stuff from the Russian, especially. Yeah. Um, well, that, there's a mate, but he yeah. just he really knows the landscape, you know. Absolutely. So you can do the next one. Uh, Minute Operas by Frederic Fortz. Uh, translated from the French by Daniel Levin Becker, Ian Monk, Michel Notboom, and Jean-Jacques Poussel. Uh, this is Fran- from France, translated from the French. Um, uh, Burning Deck Press. I don't know where they are. They're in um, Brown, in Providence. Oh, wait, is this... Um, Rosemary Waldrop and Rosemary, Keith Waldrop. Rosemary, yep. yes, and Keith Waldrop. I just saw them recently. Oh, yeah, they're wonderful. They're, they're uh, fantastic, and I love their. They do really good. They do really good experimental, crazy books too, and I like that um, for their poetry. So I, I usually, I feel like they they will always have at least one book on here, just because they do so many good stuff, so much good stuff. Uh, Frederick has another right. book that Emma Ramadan just translated and is coming out now. Although I think it's with a very small press. Um, I saw the name of it and I can't remember. And I thought that's what you were going to mention too. Um. Uh, where is it? Hold on. I, I just saw a copy uh, not that long ago. Uh, what is it called? 33 Flat Sonnets. Oh, okay. I don't know who the publisher is, though. He's uh, wild. I, he's super he is wild. Something, is he related to Ulipo in some way? Yeah, I believe so. I don't know if he's officially a member or not, but I think he's, he's related or influenced by it, if not. All right. Well, Daniel's in there. Love yeah, Daniel's in there, and Ian Monk. Right, who's done other... Who is an Olympian member, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, and he's translated to, like, Jacques Rubeau and all those people, so... Um, next one we have is Rilke Shake by Angelica Fritas, translated from the Portuguese by Hilary Kaplan. Um, then she's from Brazil, and it's published by Phoneme Media. Phoneme has come on strong. They won last year... They have two books on this long list. Um, David Shook is really a great guy. He talked to my class uh, last week about Mario Beatin, who they publish. And I think he's really just a, a fantastic, like, innovative, interesting dude um, with a great mustache. And uh, so I think it's cool that this is on there. This is one of the, this is one of the uh, poetry books I wanted to read this year in, in my goal to try and read more poetry books. I like the cover. I like uh, sounds interesting, that's for sure. And it's got like, it sounds sort of silly. Like there's one that's in the bathtub with Gertrude Stein that begins, Gertrude Stein has a big butt slide over Gertrude. <laughs> you're, man of, you're easily amused. I am amused. I, yeah, it goes on and on. There's more, there's more to that, but I'll just let it go there. I'll, just, I'll, I'll stick with that. That's not, that's not the normal, the normal poetry of poetry being dry and bland and like serious and heavy. This seems a little bit not that. Yes. Which is more in my vein. 
Um, next, Wild Words for Tamil Poets, edited and translated from the Tamil by Lakshmi Holmstrom. Uh, this is from India, which I have a question about in a moment, and uh, published by Harper Collins India. So, how does this become eligible? It's actually distributed here. Wow. I, I know, and I, I was amazed as well. <laughs> I was initially like, no, this, this can't count. And then I looked into it, and it's like, no, it's actually, they distribute it here for whatever reason. Um, and it's a crazy book because, like, there were they all these female poets were attacked, like like basically just attacked for for what they had written and everything else. And so this book came kind of out of that, out of like this really aggressive, um, whatever, uh, like sort of hatred towards women writers for being obscene and immodest. Um, in 2003, this is the actual quote is in 2003, a few self-styled guardians of Tamil culture objected publicly to the language of a new generation of women poets, charging them with obscenity and immodesty. And now they've published this book with some of their poems in English. Um, I have so many questions about this. So Tamil is not, it's not a language spoken in India natively, is it? Yeah, it's one yeah. of the it's one of the millions of languages. But Tamil is the island of the what, oh. what used to be Ceylon. What is that island called? Yeah, uh, can we That's be, geography here? Sri Lanka. Sri it's, Lanka. Thank you. Is that what they speak in Sri Lanka? Yeah, it's spoken by the Tamil people of India and Sri Lanka. Oh. Also known as the Tamil diaspora. It's the official language of two countries, Singapore and Sri Lanka. It has official status in the Indian state of Tamil Nadu and the Indian Union territory of Puducherry. It's one of the languages of education in Malaysia, along with English, Malay, and Mandarin. So, yeah, and it's spoken in India throughout Kerala, Puducherry, Andaman, and Nicobar Islands, and a secondary language in other parts. One of the 22 languages of India. All right. Yeah, I, I mean the thing with India, Indians, India, and India's languages are crazy because there's so so many of them and so many official ones, and they're all spoken in little sections. And then those people seem to move um, to other right. places as well, obviously. Right. So so yeah, so that's where that's where that one came from. Okay. Um, next up is "Empty Chairs," selected poems by Lu Sha. I'm not sure. Translated from the Chinese by Ming Di and Jennifer Stern. Um, she's from there, she's a Chinese poet and is published by Grey Wolf. These, a lot of these, what's funny, I don't know if it's all Grey Wolf books, but a lot of these Chinese poetry books that we've gotten recently all have the same similar look to them. I was just going to say that. It's, um, I don't really know how to define the look itself. It's but what it yeah, seems to be a reaction to 20 some odd years of really bad stereotypical Chinese covers. <laughs> that seems to be true. I agree with that. Like, and they're so they're they're making them less kind of ridiculous. Does that make sense? Yeah, and they all they have that kind of split cover and like this sort of. And it might be that it's just they're all coming from Grey Wolf. I don't know. I just feel like I've seen similar. Oh, you know, the other places Zephyr Press does books that look similar to this. Yeah. Um, but even like some of the New Directions stuff. Oh, looks, that's true. You know, not dissimilar. Interesting. Um, speaking of covers, load poems <laughs> like guns, women's poetry from Herat, Afghanistan. Why is it? Okay. Uh, edited and translated from the Persian by Farzana Marie uh, from Afghanistan. And, oh, God, I'm so happy I get to say this. It's from Holy Cow Press. Uh, <laughs> there's an exclamation point in the name of that press. This so. is absolutely true, and that is how it is written. It's not Holy Cow Press exclamation point. It's Holy Cow Press. <laughs> and it's I from, hate this cover so much. I imagine you would. You, shouldn't, you should not go visit their website then. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, but Holy Cow Press is in Duluth, Minnesota, which <laughs> might be the first and only book published by someone in Duluth that has made it onto the long list. I didn't... Wow. I mean, I hate to be one of those people who's like, what the hell goes on in Duluth besides, like, factor manufacture, but... I think there's a lot of cows. A lot of cows. A lot of dairy, I would imagine. In fact, I feel like on their website, there's something about... When I was looking at the About Us to try and find the guy's email, that he has cows. It is called Holy Cow, right? Yeah, I would hope so then that he actually has, maybe he has a holy cow. No, there's pictures of him with cows. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, um, uh, Jim Perlman is the guy's name. And he decided to start publishing translated poetry? I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, the description doesn't actually say anything about him having cows, but, uh, 
the picture of him. He has a he actually has a uh, cowboy hat that is um, like cow pattern, and he's oh. with with a couple cows. Okay, a lot of cows. Yes, yeah, so there's cows anyway. involved. So it's not out of, out of nowhere. <laughs> what is Harat? Where is Harat? You, you, you ask me these questions like I did anything other than just typing up all the information as fast as I possibly could yesterday <laughs> this morning. Um, the eight ho- leading Harati poems with their selections and poems and translation. Um, it starts with a long introduction, which provides some remarkable historical, cultural, and geopolitical facts on Harat and its literary legacy. Apparently, it's it the is third the largest third largest city. city. I don't know where. Hold on. I don't know any of the geography of Afghanistan. I guess it's... Uh, I'm, okay. Looking at a map, that does not actually help. <laughs> <laughs> there is actually a... Um, this, the, there's a, the introduction is entitled, Why Poetry? Why Harat? So maybe that has some of the answers in there. You know, those are my questions. Those are exactly your questions. It's, it's close to Iran. Uh, and Turkmenistan. It's up in that trying that area. Oh, okay. There's the the introduction is like uh twenty like thirty pages long. So yeah, and it, but it goes through like the beginning part is just like what the collection is, and then it has information about each one of the poets too. So um but there's I think eight eight female poets in here from Afghanistan, from Herat. And it's they're all post two thousand and one. So I don't think I've seen any other books of poetry from Afghanistan recently. So, anyways, moving on, because I know we're going to run low on time here. Um, Showing yes. time. Uh, Slavino Ocampo's collection of poetry, which is translated from the Spanish by Jason Weiss and published by New York Review of Books, is the next one on here. She's mostly known as a short story writer, but she also did a lot of poetry. I um, The one problem I have with the NYRB's poetry series is I wish they gave these things names. <laughs> I hate writing like Slavino Ocampo by Slavino Ocampo <laughs> translated from the Spanish because it just feels silly. Yeah, why? That is weird. I just don't know how to do it properly so that it doesn't look screwed up and that it's still accurate when I write it out on the website and in the press release. That is, my, that is literally my complaint is that it makes it tricky for me to know what to do. But we have we have one at the um, bookstore, Apollinaire, and it's called Zone. It well, actually... yeah, but that's a real collection called Zone. Yeah. I think this is like selected, but it could be like selected poems. Yeah, I'd be good Some... with that. Anyways, yeah, she's she's really cool. So this is uh this uh, this probably has a good shot at winning actually. Uh next Black Fl- The Black Flower and Other Zapotec Poems by Natalia Toledo from Mexico, translated from the Spanish and Isthmus Isthmus Zapotec. Yep. By Claire Sullivan. Uh published by how do you say that? Phonem? Phoneme Media. Phoneme Media. Uh, so it's got both languages it's in there? It's got both languages in there. So she writes in both languages. Yep. So they're not, she's not translating her own. No, I, no, okay. I don't have the book. That's one of the ones I don't have in front of me, but I have seen it before because we get all the stuff from phoneme. Um, it's not right here, but yeah, I believe it has, it has poems in both languages. I even like bits and, uh, and Zapotec. So which is interesting. It is interesting. That is also, the sure. first time that's been on here. Um, the next one is The Nomads My Brothers Go Out to Drink from the Big Dipper by Abdurrahman Awabiri, which has a typo in here that I just noticed. Um, translated yep. from the French by Nancy Naomi Carlson, and, published, and he's from Djibouti, and is published by Seagull Books, which I like him. I don't read his poems, but I like I liked the couple of fiction books of his that I've read. Um, I have dipped into the poetry. Um, Whoa. Yeah, when I was trying to uh, get uh, the best sort of poetry books for the section at the bookstore. Um, Oh, yeah. And you'd be shocked at how many people come in and say, I just want some good poetry. And I'm like, oh, man, I need to take a little crash course. So I would, you know, dip into these things. I like I like them quite a bit. So Uh, lastly on this list is Sea Summit by Yi Lu, translated from the Chinese um, by Fiona Shi Lorraine, published by Milkweed. There's a lot of Chinese books on these two lists. Yes. Which is, I, I don't, I think that that's unusual. I, w- I didn't go back to look at anything uh, else, like the past, past uh, list to see how many Chinese there were versus this time, but it feels like there's a lot more this time. Um, yes. Interesting. 
Good, good for them and good for milkweed too. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the fiction. Fiction. Anything that you? Well, do you have any surprises for the fiction? The things that you thought were going to be on here that didn't make it, or that, or that were that you were surprised by? Um, I'm scrolling through one more time. I know this list pretty intimately. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay. I'm at a disadvantage here because I know which of these books were like judges' wildcard picks. Oh, yeah. Let's explain that really quick. So uh, the voting is done. They, the, the judges vote on the top 16. And once that's set, each of the nine judges picks a random book that is not already on part of the top 16 to be included as part of the 25. Um, so it's one more chance for them to include a book that they really loved on the long list. And then give it another chance, you know, to be discussed and looked at more closely um, because, they, you know, they, they get another chance to, to champion it a little bit. So I know which of these nine are those books. And so there, there are a couple where I'd be inclined to say, I can't believe this made it on. It didn't seem like it had support. And then all of a sudden, oh, right. It only takes one person. So Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> so, um, no, I, it's weird. People have sort of hinted to me that they, they assumed that um, the Welbeck was going to be on here. I assume that. I Look, I love Welbeck. I think he's um, a very important writer. I don't think that most people think he's a good writer, which is, I disagree, I will say. But um, it, it seems to be a rather common uh, belief. But on the other hand, you know... For all the hype surrounding the Ferrante books and as, and as um, you know, well regarded as they are and everything, I, I don't know that anyone truly thinks that they're just amazing writing and an amazing translation. I, 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 I would agree with you, except that I think that some people do. I, I, I think that there are people who do. Hmm. I mean, they're, I think she's a good writer. I don't think she's like, I mean, I don't think she's like the greatest writer who ever lived. Not right. that that's what we're looking here for, but looking for here, but you know, um, what else? I guess the, the other ones that were surprising, I think that people were um, mostly the Patrick Modiano. Cause there, he had so many books that came out and uh, won the Nobel prize and he's not on here, which I actually was not surprised by at all. I was not surprised at all. I think there's a little bit of just exhaustion in the yeah. same way. Like, you know, uh, Bolaño by the end. Everyone was like, oh my god, more Bolaño. Yeah, exactly. It's even worse, because, I mean, how many Modiano books were published last year? I want to say there was f- five or something like that. Maybe it was only three, but it feels like it was like 20. I was, uh, it, To me, it feels like there were like 10, but... What year? What year was last year? 2015? <laughs> yes, There's what? four. There are four. <laughs> okay. So I guess a couple that I'm thinking of snuck in at the end of 2014... And there's been a, like several. And there's already one this, for this year. Two minimum four. Yeah, that's well. Some of those might be reprints too. So anyway, in here. there's a lot. Yep, there's a lot. There's a <laughs> shitload of them, um, and I think that doesn't help. What? That doesn't help when you're getting to a jury thing when it's like just so many. Right, and the Vila Matas, I guess, is the other thing people are like. But again, there's so many, and yeah, I don't know. With Vila Matas, I don't feel like any one stands out. I think is the problem. I think of those three, none of those are my favorite of his. But right. anyway, so we should probably go on to this one. Um, so the actual books that actually made it, um, I'm looking at the list. The first one is A General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduardo Agolusa, translated from the Portuguese by Daniel Hahn. Agolusa is from Angola, and this is published by Archipelago Books. I haven't, I've read one of his Agolusa books a long time ago, and I haven't read them since. But um, I really do like Daniel Han. He's great. He uh, used to be the, one of the co-directors of the British Center for Literary Translation. He's super active in like, promoting international literature and was on the Independent Foreign Fiction Prize Committee before and has won that award. And I, I really like him, so I'm really glad this is on here. I mean, the book's probably good, too, and I like Agalusa, but I feel in a, more of an affinity to Danny because I just know him better. So I think that's cool for, for that to have made it. Uh, up next... One that I'm really pleased made it. Uh, Arvida by Samuel. I should probably pronounce this the French way, but Arvida by Samuel Archibald, uh, translated from the French by Donald Winkler. This is from uh, Canada, the French speaking part of Canada, and published by Biblioasis. Yeah, I was going to put Quebec, and then I was like, that just, I, you know. 
You're just feeding into their desire. To be... <laughs> I, I put it in the database that way. Um, same thing with Catalonia, but it's not, but I don't put it on the website that way. Right. Because it seems weird. But yeah, I'm, I'm psyched that we talked about this cover and then this is on here. I'm hoping that both of them are at the uh, Blue Metropolis Festival in a couple weeks when I am, because it'd be cool to, to meet them. Um, next up, we have Nowhere to be Found by Bae Soa, translated from the Korean by Sora Kim Russell. Uh, Bae is from South Korea, and it's published by Amazon Crossing, being the first book that Amazon Crossing has on any of these lists. Um, and it's not surprising that it's this book. Um, and it's interesting because they did publish 78 books last year or whatever in translation. So, you know, you'd think that they would have more, at least one on here, and they do. And that's and it's the book that I would have predicted right away would be on here. This is one of my favorites from last year. So, Yeah, you predicted this many, 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 many months ago. So. Yep. It's a good book. It's a damn good book. And we're doing two of our books in the next two years. So hopefully this is just the beginning of the Besoa takeover. By, by the time our last one comes out, you guys will be sick of her and won't put her on the list. <laughs> um, up next the Merceau investigation by Kamel Daoud uh, who is Algerian this is translated from the French uh, by John Cullen and published by the other press uh, another cover we talked about last week yeah, yes seriously um, I, I have so many mixed opinions about this book in general <laughs> uh, it's just not worth getting into do you think it's going to make the short list for- I'm surprised that it made it. I am. Okay. Okay. I really. I other people feel very differently about this book. Yeah. I just did. It did not grab me the same way. But here's my 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 one problem in one sentence <laughs> is that I don't know how to judge this book because the way you look at it and interpret it is entirely dependent on another book. Yeah. And so, how do you judge it by itself? That's a good point. And I, I don't know how to feel. I don't know the answer to that question. So <laughs> let's move. Um, <laughs> so the next one is French Perfume by, is it Amir Tag El Sir? Translated yeah. from the Arabic by William Hutchins. Um, El Sir is from Sudan, and this is from Anti Book Club. These are all like parts that we usually don't see on the list, and that's pretty cool. Um, there's usually an Arabic book or two, but Sudan is unusual, and Anti Book Club I'm not super familiar with. This book stood up because the cover is pretty wild. Um, All very... of their covers are fucking awesome. <laughs> Go to their their website is so fantastic. <laughs> it really is. I was I, I like that, and they like that. It's like bright and vibrant and wild, and it sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm excited to read this one. This is one like I had no idea what it was, and then yep. you know when, when it started, you know getting some mentions as we get close to the long list. I was like, all right, I got to track this down. Can I actually read the jacket copy for this one for anyone listening? Cause this sounds great. I had many things in mind that I wanted to achieve before the French woman Katya arrived. So begins the story of French perfume as told by Ali Jar Jar, the town gossip and schemer of a poor community, rich with sleazy bachelors, desperate women, soothsayers and secret police. Then it goes on later to say quickly, Spike Jones is her crashes into Samuel Beckett's waiting for Godot as our charming narrator allows his attraction for a stranger's online existence to become a frightening obsession in the real world yeah yeah this sounds wild I'm, i this is one of the ones i'm excited to look at too especially because it's pretty and it's short yeah uh up next the story of the lost child by elena ferrante translated from the italian by ann goldstein um published by europa editions this uh we've talked about at length i yeah. feel like and we all yeah. knew this was gonna be on here this one's yep. probably the least surprising thing um, next up is Sphinx by Anne Garita. Is it Garita? Translated, Garita. Garita. Translated Garita. from the French by Emma Ramadan. Um, Greta is from France, and Deep Bellum is the publisher. We've also talked about this a few times. Um, yep. And it's one of the books I would think is like a strong uh, shortlist candidate, at least. We shall see. <laughs> You're going to give away no hints. Nope. <sighs> Fair enough. Uh, Next, The Physics of Sorrow by, is it Georgie or Georgie? I say Georgie, but they say it's a slightly different when they say it, but. Yeah. Georgie Gaspadinov? Yeah, or Gaspadinov. Gaspadinov. Okay. Learn something every day. Translated from the Bulgarian by Angela Rodell uh, and published by you, Open Letter. Yeah, this is one of our ones that's on here. I love this book. This is one of my Uh, favorites. I clearly love this book um, as we were recording this. Oh, wait, it's already up. Yep, the, it's uh, already up. I wrote the uh, Why This Book Should Win post for this. Um, 
since I'm, you know, I was soliciting, I got to choose first which one I <laughs> wanted to write. And uh, I immediately chose this one. Yeah, I really, really, really love this book. It's um, super cool. I don't, I, there's not, it's really um, just layered and beautifully written and just really thought provoking. And it's one of those books where, like, you know, DeLillo has this power for me and um, Thomas Pynchon, David Foster Wallace. Uh, who else? I think when I was reading like The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt, like you're just <laughs> reading it and all of a sudden you have to just pause and like think about the world for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love uh, that book. And yeah, he's, he's capable of doing that. It's super cool. And he doesn't like, write that frequently, which is interesting too. It's a slow writer. I really doesn't read that way. No, he's, I mean, I think he only has like, this is the first book in a few years. Like there's, there's time in between his books, um, which is, is great. And isn't, isn't that unusual, but I feel like a lot of the Eastern European writers I know seem to bring out stuff much, much more frequently. Right. But that's neither here nor there. I just really like him. Done. He, he's a, he's a cool guy. Um, and he's good at ping pong. But uh, it's moving on. We have Science Proceeding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera, which is translated from the Spanish by Lisa Dillman. Herrera is from Mexico and is published by And Other Stories. And Herrera has another book coming out like next month. So this is like good timing for him. Um, this is one that I think is a, a short list book because it's got so much to do with language and with crossing the border. And it's interesting. And it's got a plot, but also like these other surrounding things. This is one of the 11 that I've read. So I have like a little bit more to say about it than usual. I have not read this yet. I did just order a copy. Um, I don't know why. Side tangent here. Uh, since I started working for a bookstore again, I feel really bad about emailing publishers for free books. Um, <laughs> I can't keep buying them. I'm sure that they would send me a copy of this. Yeah. Book. Um, but yeah, I figured I would buy a copy. Ah, let's support them. That's good. They exactly. appreciate it. I'm sure they do. They should. Uh, I think my thinking is because I ordered books like this through Ingram. Mm-hmm. I think my thinking is because I'm ordering it through Ingram, it convinces Ingram to keep copies at the warehouse and make sure it's all. Uh, that's I a good idea. That means what if my logic holds water at all? But I like <laughs> to think it does. <laughs> Why not? Uh, up next, The Sleep of the Righteous by Wolfgang Hilbig, translated from the German by Isabel Fargo Cole. Um, this is from Two Lines Press. I know nothing about this book. I'm I sorry. read I, actually. The other book, he had two books that came out this year. This one, um, which is short stories, and then I, um, which is like a paranoid novel of someone who's part of like the, um, like the, he's like a, uh, like a spy, essentially, but not part of the Stasi exactly, but like sort of during the, during the Cold War times in Berlin. And it's really fragmented and crazy. Um, I was really interested to read this, but we, I think we sent our copy out for review, so we don't have one right here. But I, I really liked I, and I'm, I, I've heard really good things about this one as well. Yeah, I read the, um, when I was sending you like the links and everything to the books pages on all the publishers' website, I was reading about it. And there yeah. were some review quotes and everything. And it sounds interesting. I just, I, I had not heard of it until it showed up on the long list. Yeah. It's, it's, he's, he's, he's a being rediscovered, being discovered. I mean, he died, he's died, but I don't think any of his books have been translated until this year. And there are two of them almost simultaneously. So. Oh, wait, this reminds me of a book that I was surprised that did not make it is the weight of things. Oh yeah. Huh. I didn't even think of that until, uh, but you're right. Hmm. Interesting. I really like that book. Um, Me too. I, I can't believe you make it. Um, oh, you're up next. Uh, um, is, the next one is Moods by Yoel Hoffman, translated from the Hebrew by Peter Cole. Um, Hoffman's from Israel, and this is published by you, very well by your former employer, I guess, New Directions. Yeah. Um, which is one of the four books. New Directions had the most books on the on in the long or lot too long list combined. Um, and this is one of them. I've read his, a couple of his other books. I haven't read this one. I have the galley though, right here that I'm holding. And I, Peter Cole came and gave a speech on campus a few, I think it was a couple years ago now. Um, and he was really cool. I really liked talking to him, listening to his approach to translation and to literature in general. So I have high hopes to, to read this one as well. Um, I never finished this, not, not because I wasn't into it or anything, just, mm-hmm. you know, I, I only needed to read a little bit of it for, what I was doing in New Directions at the time and had to move on. Uh, but I, Peter is fantastic. I've never met Joel. Um, 
I missed when he was here. But uh, Peter Cole is fantastic as well. This, yeah. uh, I don't know. I, for some reason, thought this would be sort of under the radar. I don't, mm-hmm. don't ask you why, but um, that's a stupid way of thinking in retrospect. Like, I really thought, like, no one was going to pay attention to this. And, and you know, everyone it yeah, it doesn't get the flashy attention of, like, some of the other books that even, like, because this is, we're, we're into the New Directions run here, so you can talk about them as a, as a whole in some ways. Yeah. But they didn't get the sort of flashy attention that the next book, um, or the Beauty next couple of by Ika Kareniwan, translated from Indonesian by Annie Tucker. Uh, yes, also from New Directions. Which this got a lot more attention, in part because he had two books come out, like that Tiger, was it Tiger Man? Tiger... Something like Tiger that. Something man, tiger. Um, from Verso, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe that helped, and because it's like Indonesian, like not that many Indonesian books that are made available. So, and it's well, big also, and fat, and there's a lot of rape. And Jesus, there's a lot of rape. I gave my first trigger warning to a class ever in the history of teaching because of this book. That today I was like, just be warned. It's not graphic. It's not. It's not overly graphic. It's not overly anything. But there is an insane amount of rape in here. <laughs> Characters raped by a dog. Um, and then one more. Is The Complete Stories by Clarice Lispector, translated from the Portuguese by Katrina Dodson. Um, Lispector obviously was from Brazil, and this is published by New Directions as well. Which this has to be a favorite to win at all, but at least to be on the, on the, the short list. Yes, I, I think that's safe to say. Um, I don't know. <laughs> How much more can we say about Liz Spector? I mean, she really is brilliant, you know, and I'm really glad that these are in English and that people can read them. Yeah, and that she's gotten like a huge following over the past few yeah. years. That's I'm sort of. There's, I, I wouldn't be surprised that this is on here, but um, but she does have. I mean, she's had. F- f- um, I guess it's just three that were available in the past. I don't, yeah, and one of them at least made the long list um, because the other two were retranslations. But yeah, whatever. Um. Then we have this. Oh, the next one's yours. The the story of my teeth by Valeria Luiselli, translated from the Spanish, uh, Mexican Spanish by Christina McSweeney, and uh, from Coffeehouse Press. This one, so I'd say, Lispector Luiselli and Fronte. Absolutely, I think anyone guessing who was going to be on the long list would have named those three. Yes. <laughs> like absolutely, and then maybe the next one too, which is Tram eighty three by Fiston Muanza Mujila, translated from the French by Roland Glasser. He's from the Democratic Republican Republic of the Congo and published by Deep Vellum. Those ones I would have said yes, the, no, no question. Those are going to be on the long list. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know that they're also guaranteed for the next stage, but I don't know that either. But for twenty five books, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, have we talked about this before? I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this book. I have not read it um, at all, but I, I have two copies in front of me. I don't like the cover of this book. Sorry, Seven Stories. What? Oh, no. I was talking about the Tram 83. Oh, I thought you were talking about you're going to the next one. No, we haven't gone to the next one yet. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought you didn't like the Tram 83 cover. No, I like, I like the Tram 83 cover. Okay. Have you read it, though? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I used it in my class, too. There's one, one of my students, they, they get to pick at the end which book they're going to write on, and she is determined to write on Tram 83 because it is her favorite book like, oh. of, of the class for sure, and it seems like one of her favorite books, period. Yeah, and she's like, one of the things that she really tapped into is all like the religious imagery and all the references to biblical verses that don't exist and other things like that. She's like a, she went really deep on this for especially for an undergrad student. Next up, The Body Where I Was Born by Guadalupe Natel, translated from the Spanish by J.T. Lichtenstein. This one, also from Mexico, uh, from Seven Stories Press. By my count, that's three? I think that, yeah, there's a lot of Spanish. Oh, no, but that's three Spanish-Mexican. Mexican. Yeah, one, Yuri two, Herrera, Valeria, three. And... Four, there's four. Is there another from Mexico? Yep. Which one? Daniel Sada. Sada. Jesus. Yep. So four Mexican Spanish. That's wild. That's There's like something... one sixth of the list. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's. I, I wish I understood the reasons for that, but this is the book that I don't like the cover of. Ah. Uh, 
I don't like it or dislike it. I suppose the font is terrible. Yeah, no. I just it's just too uh, too washed out for me, in my opinion. It's quite washed out. I agree. Yeah, it feels you know it feels like it would be an Arabic book. <laughs> it does. It's got a hand feel to it. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is horrible to say but was part of our conversation last week so sort of makes sense um but yeah i haven't read this i know she's like very well respected and well regarded and people yeah. really like her so i i wouldn't be surprised if i really like this but i haven't had a chance to yet um next up this is one of ours the things we don't do by andres newman translated from the spanish by nick caster and lorenza garcia he's our, from argentina also lives in spain um and published by open letter i'm glad that this is on here i'm sort of surprised because i feel like um short story collections are tough tough yeah. to get onto the the long list oh I, yeah absolutely it's because it's it's varied it's all all the sort of things but andres is really charming and like really interesting writer and spectacular um also very good at ping pong we have a we have very good ping pong players <laughs> on our list um and he's actually in los angeles and san francisco and seattle this week doing readings so with naya oh okay okay oh, right. uh wait did you see la yeah although he's just going to be at awp they're not doing an event there um, next, I Refuse by Per Pedersen, translated from Nor- Norwegian by Don Bartlett, uh, published by Grey Wolf. The non-Norwegian, the non Nasgard norwegian writer to make the list. Yeah. I cool. wasn't surprised Knosgaard wasn't on here. Uh, I agree. But I figure, like, for, when it comes to that sixth book, he probably will be, though. Many years from now. <laughs> yeah, like two or three, I guess, but... Yeah, I haven't read this um, Pedersen book. Have you? No, but I didn't. I'm not a huge fan of outstanding horses, so yeah, me neither. Um, I really feel compelled to read it. People, I know people really like him though too. If it makes the short list, I'll, I'll have to read it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, next up, we have War, So Much War by Mercedes Rodreda, translated from the Catalan by Marusha Rolano and Martha Tennant. Um, Rodoreda is Catalan. She's from Spain. Um, and this one is an open letter book as well. I ended up with two of ours. Um, this is, I love Mercedes Rodoreda. She's one of my all time favorites. So that's, I'm glad to see this on here. Definitely. So my mother's favorite. That's it. Yeah. Which is also fun. <laughs> A wild connection. So bizarre. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this one I need to read. You've stopped sending me free books. So now no, I... no, no, I, I found your new catalog or your new address. Oh, okay. Because when you moved, I had, I took it off. Huh. Then, right, right, right. And okay. then I never, I just forgot to p- putting you back on. So I did get you sent me the Duras. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. At the store, so you can send them there. Um, next one out of two uh, by Daniel Sada uh, from Mexico, translated from Spanish by Catherine Silver uh, from Grey Wolf Press. Which that's cool too. I like Sada. I haven't read this. I wanted to read this book, but for whatever reason, I just haven't found the time yet. Um, and it, which is dumb because it's really short. But I really liked Almost Never when that came out. Yeah, I really like Sada. I don't know why I haven't heard anything about this one and or picked it up. I felt I, at one point in time I was like, I don't think this got a lot of attention. And then I like Googled it and I was like, No, it it, it kind of did. It, I just, yeah. it just yeah, like, we seem to just miss it entirely. Yeah, it's weird. Um, the next book is interesting. So this is Berlin by Alice Steger, translated from the Slovene by Brian Henry, Forrest Gander, and Aljaj Kovac. Um, and he's from Slovenia, and it's published by Counterpath. And Steger won the Best Translated Book Award for Poetry before, for the hmm. Book of Things, um, which is published by Boa Editions. And this was in, I think, 2011, if I remember correctly, or 2010. Um but yeah, so I don't, I didn't really, I have this book here, um, and I know that he's, that it's, it's like a mixture of like a lot of different things, because there's photography in here as well, um, and pictures, and it's sort of like fiction slash essay, um, but this looks intriguing. Uh, yeah, and the, the, the small group of judges who really, really love this book uh, talk about it in a way that um, I really need to uh, pick up a copy yeah, this sounds very, this looks very cool. First section's on bakeries and pharmacies. Yeah. Um, um, cool. The Big Green Tent by Ludmila Yulichkaya, translated from the Russian by Polly Gannon, um, published by FSG. This is a big book. Big book, the big green cover, and 
Would you yeah. say a big green tent on the cover? Yeah, I, I, I would call that a tent, I suppose. <laughs> I saw there's a really good review of this by Jonathan Sturgeon on FlavorWire that almost convinced me to read it. Um, not that I don't want to read it, but it's one of those that's like, yep, 573 pages. When I don't have other obligations, then I can consider that. But he, he gave a lot of praise. He heaped a lot of praise on it and really made it sound pretty interesting. That. Uh, I don't think I'll be reading it. But. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> the next one I'm curious if you read is Murder Most Serene by Gabriel Whitcop, translated from the French by Louise Rogers Lalaurie. Um, Whitcop is from France and is published by Wakefield Press. I have not read this yet, um, but I've been in touch with the guy at Wakefield, Mark, I believe yep. is his name. Mark uh, um, trying to get, you know, when I was getting copies for whatever reason, they hadn't sent them out in time and, you know, or some judges hadn't got him. Anyway, like, you know, he and I just sort of talked about Woodcock in general, and I am pretty intrigued, I gotta say. Yeah, yeah, she sounds amazing. And I, I mean, this is another one of those presses. I love Wakefield, and yeah. they do really good stuff, so I'm intrigued. Definitely. And they did, I think another Woodcock came out. They did. Um, the same year, no? Did they yeah, have? I can't remember what the name of it is. I can find it in a second, though. It is um, Necrophiliac. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Necrophilia came out in 2011. Never mind. The other one that they did was Exemplary Departures, which right. came out last year. Yeah. Uh, next, the four books by Jan Lianke, uh, translated from the Chinese by Carlos Rojas, uh, published by Grove Press. This actually sounds interesting. I, I for for a book I'd never heard of and had no frame of reference for. Um, when I landed on the page, I I read. Um, a lot of good things about it, or things that sounded good to me. Um, but I'd never heard of him. Never. Yeah, he's, he's been around for a while, because they published, I think, yeah, four of his books. Um, and I think a couple of them have been on the long list. The most recent was Lenin's Kisses, which I don't think was, but um, Serve the People, I believe, was, and maybe Dream of Ding Village as well. He's always sounded fairly interesting to me. I just haven't, haven't found time to, be, to, to dive in. Yeah. Um, oh, you have the last one. Yeah, and this one's going to be brutal. Mirages of the Mind by Mushtaq Ahmed Yusufi, translated from the Urdu by Matt Reek and Aftab Ahmad. I did a thing I did okay. Um, from India and published by New Directions. I hate this goddamn cover. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. <laughs> uh, I agree. Don't worry. Any other cover. <laughs> but, I, but this book sounds really fun. Yes, but God, that cover. Um, so there we are. Yep, that's it. So one of the things that was interesting is that there are certain overlaps um, between this and the Man Booker Prize. So like the, uh, which, where, what were the four? The Jan Lianke, uh, um, what were the other ones? The Le Spectre, maybe? I think so, yeah. The Kurnawan, but it was the other one, but the same author. And then the Merceau Investigation, I believe. Yes. So there was some overlap with the Man Booker International Prize, um, which happens, I think, almost every single time when it used to be called the Independent Foreign Fiction Prize. But uh, this time, the, the, those ones were all, all on there, which is interesting. But, and that, who do you, so you, don't want, you can't give any guesses as to the 10. No, I am. Yeah, I was just going to say it's a real shame I can't make any guesses. Cause... Let me see if I can, if I can name 10 here. Um, just going through, I'm probably going to end up with too many. But I'm going to say Nowhere to be Found, The Bessois, French Perfume, Just Gut Feeling, Story of the Lost Child, Sphinx and the Physics of Sorrow, Science Proceeding the End of the World, Beauty is a Wound, Le Specter Luiselli, that's nine. Trimity 3 is ten. Damn it. Yeah, I'd end up with like 15. Ugh, picking ten of these is really hard. Man, I don't know. I'll stick with those 10. <laughs> just because just they're the first 10 I hit. We shall see. Um, yeah. I believe, when is the shortlist announced? April 19th. April 19th. April 19th, and it will be announced on the Millions website um, for people listening. Also, for people listening that are interested in the, on the award and in all the things surrounding it, on May 4th, 
um, will be when the winners are announced, and they will be announced simultaneously on the Millions website and at a special event at the Folly in New York City, which is at 92 West Houston Street. Um, and that will start at 6.30, and at 7, promptly we'll announce the winners because we want to make sure that they uh, are it's online at the same time. Um, but that that is open to the public. Anyone can come. Their base. If you're over 21. Yeah, like if you're over 21, you can come. There's a bar, we should point out. <laughs> they do have food in there, so you just maybe you just can't drink. You can just hang out. Pretty sure, maybe. Because at six thirty, I think that I don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe you have different rules, but I feel like here, if it's before nine o'clock, anyone can get in. Who knows? Be twenty one. I don't want. I don't want anyone getting arrested because of a party we throw. Um, but yeah, there. Uh, you invite the, you to. What's that? Yeah, that we invite you to. So, but yeah, if you're over twenty one, come. Six thirty will start. Seven will announce it. It'll be at the folly, and then if you happen to be attending Book Expo America on. Uh, in Chicago on May 11th at 5 o'clock at 57th Street Books. There'll be a mini reception celebrating. Um, Kevin Elliott was one of the judges. Patrick Smith will be there. I think a couple other people. I think Amanda Bullock will be in town. And I don't know if she'll be able to attend or not. Um, And I think Amanda Nelson will be there too. Oh, and Amanda Nelson. Okay, great. So like a few of the judges will be there. Um, It's sort of to like celebrate them and to, to, for the bookstores and then especially because 57th Street was essentially like the honorary bookstore this year for the best friends they book award for all the displays that they've done uh, over the past couple of years featuring all these different books. So if you're going to be at book expo, come to that it's at five to six. And then at six, there's another event starting there featuring a Polish author whose name I forgot. Um, so you might be interested in that too, whatever it is. It's something. Yes. We will of course mention both of these things again. Uh, they are on the website. They're on the post here. Um, there's even a link to the folly and the address, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I will uh, mention it in bunches of more times, I'm sure. Yes. All right. I got to get going. Um, Sounds good. I just want to rave very quickly. I'm sure we can share this rave, if you will. Uh, season seven of Archer premieres Thursday night. Fucking yes. Awesome. <laughs> That's going to be so good. <laughs> I, I think I need that in my life. <laughs> I'm also doing fantasy baseball drafts at the same time. Um, oh, really? It's an NL only league. What? Even? And I haven't done fantasy baseball in like four years. So, uh, yeah. I, I signed up for random leagues because the league I was in last year didn't, didn't seem to get restarted. So I signed up for random leagues. I drafted one of them and did a terrible job at it. And then I let um, Yahoo draft for me on the second one, which I'm sure did a terrible job as well. But one is the um, history and the other one's head to head. So I could see how the two play out. Oh, yep. everyone cares. Everyone cares about your fantasy baseball team. By the next time we record this, though, real baseball will be on. Yeah, I think so. Um, but doesn't having it be NL only elevated to a, a higher level of, uh, you know, it's not just dumb jocks at that point. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that that's awesome, but I, that seems really complicated, too. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> do, what, like, what happens if one of your players is traded to an AL team? Do not know. Or, and then in the middle of the season, someone could come over. Also possible. No idea what the rules are on this thing. That's wild. That would be yeah. fun. But, okay, well, I will talk to you later. Have fun. All right. Congrats to uh, all the translators, authors, publishers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and uh, get reading. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye.